name is Marley Higgins. My name is Sarah Zakowski. And today we're going to be talking to you about space junk, an astronomical problem. So first we just want to ask you guys to picture Earth from space. Close your eyes and imagine you're taking off in a rocket ship, and what are you seeing as you get up there? So we imagine you probably see this. You can see a clear image of Earth. You can see the stars and everything. It's pretty clear there's Earth. And that is what it looked like in 1957. But in 2005, you can see all these white specks. And my friends, those are not stars. That is actually debris crowding our Earth. And in early as 2018, closer to us, you can see the amount of white specks and debris have actually like doubled, even tripled. And scientists believe by 2030, it could possibly look like this. So the debris actually has a name, and that's space junk. So what is space junk? Space junk is any piece of machinery left in space by humans. It could also refer to small things like paint flecks or little pieces of debris that have stayed in space. So what is it doing? What is it out there? It's actually pollution. So just like if I had trash and I would throw it on the ground and litter, I'm polluting the earth, just like I would be polluting space. It also is a disruption to observation. So NASA scientists, astronomers, they are going to be blocking people like us with telescopes. Space junk is going to block and disrupt our view of space. It's also going to disrupt exploration. So those NASA scientists and astronomers are going to be disrupted. They could be run into by space junk. For example, there was a space shuttle, an American space shuttle, that went out to space, and two-thirds layers of the glass was broken by space junk. And it's really scary to think, like, what could have happened if that third layer was also broken into? So you might be wondering, what else is the space junk doing up there besides just rotating in Earth's orbit? it could also potentially fall down to Earth. So this is a picture taken by a human of a satellite that's fallen down. It could be this size. It also could be this size, much larger. You can see it compared to a human up there. And it also could be smaller, looking like a corroded piece of metal burnt up. And you might be like, oh, I'm never going to encounter a piece of space junk, let alone it fall on me. But a woman was in a park on a walk in Wisconsin, and all of a sudden, she feels a force on her shoulder. So she turns around thinking someone may have shoved her, but no one's there. She looks on the ground, and she sees a piece of metal like this. And it's she's never seen something like this. It's all corroded. So eventually, she brings it to the space club at the library, and they identify it as space junk. So it is possible that it could hit someone. And it could be this size as well. So when you think, what could a piece like this do to a building, to our school, to one of us? This is a picture of what astronomers think that Earth's orbit could look like potentially by 2030 or even sooner at this rate. So in 1987, a NASA scientist, Donald Kessler, theorized a scenario called the Kessler Syndrome. Basically, this means the higher density of space junk that is existing in the orbit is going to produce a higher risk of collision. And the scary thing about collision with space junk is say you have a like, set amount of space junk, it gets in a collision, and even more space junk is created. So it's basically just this perpetual vicious cycle of more space junk being created. With all this in mind, you'd really think that we try and take a step back from putting more satellites and more machinery into our orbit. But actually, it's quite the opposite. There's really more projects and organizations that are sending out more satellites than ever, tens of thousands of satellites in just the next few years. For example, we have Elon Musk's SpaceX program. He's trying to send a whopping 32,000 satellites into our orbit in just the next few years. In this picture, you can see how it would wrap around our Earth, you know, there's tens of thousands of these satellites, and they're all covering just about every surface of our Earth. There's really not one spot that you can't see where a satellite would be. And this is just another image showing just what it would look like 
just from the next few years of satellite additions alone, what it would look like if all of these companies went through with their plans to send out all of these satellites. For example, we have Amazon. Um, they're planning on sending about 3,300 satellites in short orbit by 2029, and that sounds like a smaller number than um, Elon Musk's plans, which it is. It's much smaller. But keep in mind, there's only about 6,000 satellites in our orbit right now, and less than half of those are actually working. And so that doesn't include space junk that's already out there. Exactly. So it could be hit into that as well. So let's still double the number of working satellites we currently have, and Elon Musk is sending 15 times the number of working satellites we have. So now that we've got you guys are upset about the past, present, and future of space junk and satellites, here are some possible solutions. Uh, first, we have LCD. This is using a magnet to pull the space junk in and bring it back down to Earth. We also have Clear Space One, which is a robotic arm that's meant for uh, larger pieces of space junk, for example, uh, dead satellites. Because keep in mind, these satellites can be the size of a school bus. So we really need something as strong as a robotic arm to bring it back down. We also have Remove Debris, which is using a variety of different tactics. In this image, you can see a net pulling space junk in, but they also have a harpoon that will hook the space junk down. So our message here today is not to end the production of satellites, because today's society just can't exist without them. You take out your phone and make a call using a satellite. You use GPS, you're using the satellite. So it's not to stop the production. It's to create regulations, laws, international regulations and laws, to prevent more satellites going out before we deal with the space jump because it's going to possibly damage the satellites that we just spent millions of dollars on, endanger the humans and astronauts that are in those rockets. We need to deal with this problem before we put 42,000 more. Space junk is seriously a big issue, and you know, we can ignore it all we want, but it is really there. Just because we not, might not be able to see it now doesn't mean we can't see it in the future. Um, they actually can look like stars. So if in the next few years we keep adding tens of thousands of more satellites into our orbit, it's not long before we can't tell the difference between a star and a satellite. Thank you.